7 to 8, and then we'll read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 responsibly. The Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 7, and also Joshua and Bani and Cherubiah, Jamin, Akub, Shebetiah, Hodijah, Messiah, Maseya, uh, Kelita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and let's read these uh, verses, this, this chapter responsibly. I'll read verse 1 and you read verse 2. The Bible says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom that God, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit is in all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of, a man, of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning and as we, uh, and for the privilege to be able to continue our uh, study on the book of uh, Nehemiah. I pray, Lord, as we uh, look at these uh, few verses this morning, I pray that you help us, uh, give us understanding through the Holy Spirit. I pray that you give discernment to everyone and that uh, we will be able, dear Lord, to understand uh, the message that you have for us uh, this morning. I pray, Lord, that you use me uh, as I speak, dear Lord, and may, may um, everyone, dear Lord, here in this room be able to uh, be challenged, dear Lord, by the word. And as we continue to study how we, how we can uh, uh, treat your word, I pray, Lord, that you use this message in order to uh, help us improve. May we be able to glorify your name, not only now, but for the things that we're going to do the rest of this day. For all these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be uh, seated. Okay, so uh, we're going to continue our study of the Word of God uh, la from last week. So last week we studied a few verses, uh, verses 1 to 6, about how the people uh, treated the Word of God, how they sought after the Word of God, how they respected the Word of God. Of course, in those days, this is the book of the law of Moses. But to them, that is uh, the Word of God. That's the law of God. And uh, their desire to listen to it, and their patience to listen to it, their intent to be able to listen to it. We learned that it was six hours of Bible reading. And uh, we learned how they respected the Word of God. And today we're going to uh, continue uh, here in verses 7 and 8. And then we'll uh, transition to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Because I would like to point out here uh, in the preaching today or, or the teaching today, about the people who are preaching the Word of God. 
um, the people and how can we discern or how can we know that a preacher is a God called preacher because there are so many preachers out there so many people are preaching the Word of God if you scroll through Facebook there are so many Christian denominations uh, victory uh, yung mga G ano? G something uh, yung mga magagaling magsalita magaling magpatawa and they're really good speakers they're using the Word of God they're called preachers but they are not God called preachers and I believe that God called preachers has their distinct distinction and God will help us discern who they are and it's our responsibility to be sure that we are sitting under the preaching of a God called preacher. And before, I, before we go into, here, uh, into the study here, I would like to correct some things that I said last week. And uh, the captivity of the people here in Babylon, uh, he, they're in a captivity not for hundreds of years, it's exactly 70 years, but their spiritual drought is so much more than that. That's why they are here uh, trying to understand the Word of God, trying to go back to the Word of God. So we'll pick it up here in uh, verse number 7 it's, uh, and 8. And we have read uh, this. Uh, we, in verse 7, there are these men who are beside Ezra when he was reading the Word of God and also the Levites. And the Bible says here what they did was in verse 7, they caused the people to understand the law. And the people stood in their place. So they read, as they have been doing in the book of the law of God, distinctly. Okay, they, they read it clearly and gave the sense. They tried to apply it in their lives. Tried to teach them how to apply it and cause them to understand the reading. Now, I would like to point out this morning that reading the word of God is not enough. Just reading alone. We have to be able to understand the Word of God. And we are able to understand the Word of God if we let the Holy Spirit teach us while we read the Word of God. But at the same time, even though we have the, our ability to understand the Word of God, God has given us teachers, pastors. These are gifts to the church. Gifts to the church to help us understand more the Word of God. I'm not saying that without a pastor or without a preacher, you cannot understand the Word of God. That is not true at all. But with God-called pastors and God-called preachers, you're, you will be able to understand more of the Word of God. Now, we, un we study the Word of God by ourselves. We read the Word of God. We understand it. But when we sit under the preaching or the teaching of a God-called preacher or pastor, we're going to understand more of the Word of God. Kasi pag sinabi natin na hindi na natin sila kailangan, Sana hindi na binigay ng Panginoon sa church ang pastor and preacher. But we do need them. Pero po, back to the point that uh, thinking na hindi natin kayang intindihin nang wala sila. Because that is a false th uh, thinking as well. They are here to help us understand the Word of God, understand the will of God in our lives, but they are not the sole teacher of the Word of God. The, the best teacher and the main teacher of the Word of God is the Holy Spirit that taught them and the Holy Spirit that can teach you as well. But today, we're going to focus on the preachers, on these people who are, who are causing them to understand the Word of God. Now, let's put it into context. Why are these people beside Ezra? Why are they trying to make the people understand? First of all, because since these people are born into captivity, it's either they don't know the Hebrew language or they forgot about the Hebrew language. So their first job here was to translate the reading. Okay? They were born into a, an, an unbelieving land. Maybe they know a little bit of the Hebrew language, but they are not well versed in that. But So these Levites and these people are there helping them understand the reading. Kasi yung pagbabasa nila, hindi agad nila naintindihan. So they're explaining. They're there to understand. But the second reason, of course, why they are there is to explain the people how to obey what they are reading. Hindi lang po basta nila binasa. Hindi lang po nila basta itinranslate sa kanilang sa lengguahe na naintindihan nila. But they also uh, gave them uh, or, or explained to them how to appropriate what they are reading into their lives. Because without proper teaching, without proper, uh, without proper understanding of the Word of God, the reading of the Word of God will take you in a completely different direction. The Word of God is being read in many places. Today, Sunday, the Word of God is being read in uh, maybe in Catholic churches. It's being read sa Iglesia ni Cristo. It's being read in, in, in uh, uh, Pentecostal churches, in all these charismatic churches, but they're not appropriating the Word of God correctly. Kaya po hindi lang sapat yung pagbabasa lang. The Word of God is read in the government. 
But we see how corrupt the government is. The word of God is being read in workplaces. When I was a Bible student, every Monday uh, we are assigned to a particular office where we give the word of God, where we give devotions. Because owners believe that uh, putting God first at the beginning of the week will help their uh, staff be more productive or be uh, more honest in all of these things. But that is, uh, th that's why the word of God is being read there. That's why uh, I, I believe or we, we have uh, a fought a few weeks ago or a few months ago that mandatory Bible reading in schools are not, uh, should not be applied in our country. Why? Because without the proper explaining of the Word of God, it will take people in a completely different direction. What do you think is being uh, used by all these cults? The Word of God. The very Bible that we use to teach the truth, to explain the truth, is the same Bible that they are using to deceive people. Kaya nga po, binasa mo, mali ang paliwanag, ginamit lang din ng jablo ang salita ng Panginoon. Ginamit lang din ng jablo yung Bible reading para mapalayo pa tayo sa katotohanan. That's why, if imagine, if you read the Word of God into every school and without the proper teacher, without a God-called preacher explaining the Word of God, people are going to be uh, uh, taken in a completely different direction. It's either students and people are going to hate the Word of God or they're going to misunderstand the Word of God and join a cult. Kaya nga po, hindi lang po sapat. It's not enough for us to just read the Word of God, but it is more important for us to understand the Word of God. And we have the Holy Spirit to understand the Word of God, and we also have God-called preachers and pastors to help us explain the Word of God po sa atin. Now, uh, today we're going to transition to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And... Um, the bulk of this message, actually the whole message is going to be about um, what this God-called preachers or God-called pastors will, uh, will look like. Papaano natin silang malalaman? Papaano natin malalaman na sila ay mga preachers na tinawag ng Panginoon? Because we can know. God has given us discernment and we can know. And God has given us the Word of God bilang uh, uh, a guide, bilang guideline for us to know uh, what do you call this, uh, how to uh, 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 differentiate God-called preachers from other preachers. Because today, ang dami po natin napapakinggan na preaching. And most of the time, the preachings that we hear in this pulpit in YouTube or wherever we're listening, uh, preaching from, most of the time they differ from each other. Preaching styles are different. Pre uh, the, the content of the message is different. Some preachers incorporate the Word of God to what they want. Some preachers uh, 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 just plainly just preach the Word of God. How do we know that a, a, a preacher is a God-called preacher? And here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul uh, uh, gave us, without bragging, of course, uh, in, in the spirit of humility, gave us the signs of a God-called preacher. And he's using himself and his companions as an example. It says here in verse number 1, how do we know what kind of preacher is a God-called preacher? Number 1, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom. First point here is, God-called preachers do not preach through his own might. God-called preachers do not preach through his own might. The Bible says here in, the, in, in verse 1, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom. It's not that Paul is stupid. Paul is not stupid. It's not that Paul is unlearned. Because Paul is a learned person. He's a, before he was saved, he's a respected person. He was a respected person. And he was brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. He has knowledge. He knows how to speak. He knows how to persuade people. Otherwise, he will not be able to persuade these people to kill the Christians before. But Paul did not bring the word of God in the knowledge of his own wisdom or in his own might. He knows that he came to them not by his own might. Because if Paul wanted to just impress people, he can do that. He can just stand behind uh speak or you just just impress them with what he knows impress them with his eloquent speech and all these things but he said i did not come to you with the excellency of speech or wisdom that is not what i'm using when i came to you all right I, th that is not what i brought why why is it that because it says here declaring unto you the testimony of god the reason why paul was not speaking in his own wisdom or his own might because of the message that he is bringing. Because the message that he's bringing is a message that doesn't need any help or any human help at all. 
that doesn't need any uh, uh, what they call this personal experience doesn't need any uh, uh, human knowledge it only needs a person who is humble enough and and, uh, and uh, submissive enough to the Holy Spirit and be used of God that's why the letter B letter B here says a God called preacher brings the right message declaring unto you the testimony of God the reason why Paul is not using his own might, his own eloquence, his own words is because the message he's bringing is the message of God. And he knows that his own, uh, uh, his, uh, uh, what they call this, uh, uh, human uh, uh, knowledge or yung mga na acquire by his own flesh will not be used of God. That's why God broke him. That's why God made him realize that he was nothing. When Paul was on, uh, was on, on the way uh, where, where God was about to meet him, he was a person with a lot of power influence but god made him realize right there that i do not need your influence i do not need your power i do not need your intelligence i do not need your wisdom i only need your obedience and you're going to bring the gospel to the gentiles and you're going to preach the gospel to the gentiles and the reason why i don't need that is because my message do not need any human wisdom at all when we are bringing when we are bringing the right message we should deliver it in the right way do not deliver it in your own mind. Do not deliver it in your own wisdom. We, I know we have our own style, we have our own technique, but these are not the main thing of the message. The main thing is the message itself. The testimony of God. So if you want to know what a God-called preacher is, a God-called preacher doesn't preach in his own might, and he brings the right message. He declares the, uh, the preaching of the Word of God. And the reason why Paul does this is that uh, he, he, he says here in uh, the previous chapter, basahin ko lang 1 Corinthians 1, 26-29, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. It is very, and the Bible says, But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Bakit? Papara lalong makita or lalong ma uh, what do you call this lalo pong ma uh, feature ang kapangyarihan ng Panginoon and the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen yea and things which are not to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence because if you use your own might your own wisdom your own intellect into explaining the word of God preaching the word of God and challenging the people when people come forward pride will come into you. When people respond to the message, pride will come into you. You're going to trust your own self. You're going to trust your own mind. You're going to trust your own, uh, and God will not be glorified in your preaching. Kaya nga po tinatawag ng Panginoon, pagka, if you think that you're nobody, if you think that you're not good enough, you're not eloquent enough, you're not all of these things, then you are the right person for God to use. And if you are good, and if you are intelligent, if you are wise, you must be willing to forget all of these things and let God use you uh, the way He wants to use you. Look at Moses. He had the uh, authority. He had the power. He had uh, all the resources, but God had to break him and strip him empty of himself before being able to use him. That is why we, uh, the, the God called preacher also brings the right message. That's why it's also important when you're listening to the preaching, what is he preaching about? Is he preaching about the Bible? Is he preaching about the Word of God? Because if a preacher, if the bulk of the message is his experience, it's not a God called preacher. If the bulk of the message are jokes, it's not a God called preacher. The bulk of the message or the majority of what he's saying should be the reading of the Word of God and explaining the very verses that we have read. That's it. Uh, we can put some illustrations in there. Fine, not a problem. But it should not be all illustrations. One verse, ten illustrations. Isang verse na naman, puro kwento na naman. That is not how you, you explain the Word of God because the problem is most of the time, preachers make their experience the authority na, 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 uh, instead of the Word of God. Para bang, okay, here's what the Bible says, but to confirm it, I experienced that. So what if you didn't experience it? We should take what the Bible says as true because it's what the Bible says. It doesn't matter if you experience it or not. You may not be able to experience I, I'm preaching a lot of things that I have not experienced, but I can preach it with authority. Why? Because it's what the Bible says. There, here is where my authority to preach lies. That's why if I go far from it, wala na po akong authority mag-preach sa inyo. That's why no matter how 
uh, uh, how uh, they call this, maybe uh, uh, unlearned a person is. That is the exact person that God will use. Why? Because God wants His glory or wants, uh, wants Himself to be glorified and not, the uh, uh, not man. Next thing here, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Uh, let us see. God called preachers will decidedly, decidedly lift Christ up. The, the key verse, the key uh, uh, um, word here is determined. For I determined, I decided. This is my decision. Every time I stand, every time I speak, I have decided that I will not preach about anything except the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what Paul said. That is my determination. That whenever I teach you, whenever I preach, I'm going to make a conscious effort not to preach about myself, not to preach about my experience, not to preach about what I did or what God has done through me, but to preach to you about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if I preach here and you knew how to be successful in life, but your relationship with Christ did not become better, I have failed as a preacher. If I have preached and you, and, and you learned how to gain more money, but did not become closer to Christ, I have failed as a preacher. If I preach here and you learn how to uh, love your brethren, but did not increase your love for Christ, I have failed as a preacher as well. Because the only message I we need to bring you is Christ. And everything will fall into its place. Pwede po namin kayong turuan, paano maging successful, all of these things, but the only thing that we need is to teach you how to love Christ, to love the Word of God, and everything will fall into its proper place. If you love Christ, you love the brethren. If you love God, you love the Word of God. If you love God, you will love lost souls. If you love God, your, your, your life is going to be conformed into the image of Christ. Kaya nga po, ang job lang po ng mga tao na nagpipreach is to preach about the Lord Jesus Christ. Preach about the Bible. Do not stray away from the Bible. Do not stray away from, from the things that God has done. The Bible is rich enough to spend your whole life preaching about it. Hindi mo rin mauubos ang mensahe ng Bible. Kaya ka hindi mo na mauubos, sumisingit ka pa ng sarili mong mensahe. Sayang po ang opportunity to preach. That's why if a, 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 God, if a preacher is preaching a, something other than the Word of God, other than the Lord Jesus Christ, you have all the right to stand up and leave. Because that is not a God-called preacher. Okay, a God-called preacher will, will preach the Word of God. That's why uh, as, as I was reading this verse, our outreaches came to mind. Because when, when we go to outreach, we teach, the Eng we teach English, we give them clothes, we feed them. But we must not forget that the very thing that they need the most is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because they can be good English speakers. They can be successful in life. We can help them come out of poverty, go to the city, find a good job, support their family. But if they're going to hell, all of those things will not matter. But they can remain poor. They can remain the poorest of the poor. But if they are saved, that is the greatest treasure we can give them. Kaya nga po, huwag natin kakalimutan yung gospel message. That when we go to outreach, yes, teach them English, fine. Give them something, fine. But always make them realize that the main thing we're bringing is the Lord Jesus Christ. Never forget that we have to preach to them. Never forget that we have to give to them the gospel. They might listen or not listen, it's fine. Keep on preaching anyway. Because that is what we are bringing. Kaya nga po, huwag ka na magpakain, sige, mag-preach ka lang ng word of God, you have done your job. Wag mo na silang turuan ng English again. Mag-preach ka lang ng Word of God. You have done your, your job. Why? Because that is what they really need. They might not realize it now, but once they have that personal relationship with Christ, they will say, we thank you for bringing that message to us. Why? Because that is what they need. To, to let them know about Jesus Christ. Material things are good because they, are, they need it. But that is not the main message. That's the greatest treasure they can have is the Lord Jesus Christ. The, verse, the, the Bible says here in verse 3, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Letter D, God called preachers will keep on preaching no matter what. God called preachers will keep on preaching no matter what. The Bible, uh, upon arriving at Corinth, Paul said that I was with you in weakness. Okay, Maybe he's weak in his flesh. Physically, we do not know. In fear. And we know that Paul lived his life with a lot of fear. Why? Because everywhere he goes, people follow him. People who want to kill him, lying in wait just to kill him. To, to find something wrong, to put him in prison. And in much trembling. Now we can interpret it in a different way. Like uh, he's making sure that his flesh is weak and that he's humble and all these things. But the real interpretation for this is that he's really in fear. Because Paul is just a human being. Tao lang po si Paul. He's not 
a superhuman even though sometimes uh, the things that he has done uh, minsan imagine natin hindi natin kayang gawin I remember uh, yesterday I, I preached in uh, the outreach about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego when they didn't bow down to the idol and after the preaching before we go home because the, the car won't start so uh, Ponlu said I've always dreamt about that said what? Uh, that Whenever, if I am put in that situation, I will also not bow to the idol. I told him, I can put you in that situation now. <laughs> I'll threaten to burn you if you don't. <laughs> but, but he said, that, I want to stand, uh, stand for, the, uh, uh, for, 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 the, uh, for, for God and for the truth. That's what he said. But God called preachers, we must realize that suffering will come to them. The hardship will come to them. And most of the time, hindi po maganda ang buhay ng taong tinawag ng Panginoon para mag-preach. Kasi hindi po sila tinawag para yumaman. Although merong yumayaman, that is God's blessing. Hindi po sila tinawag para gumanda ang buhay. Tinawag po sila simply to preach the Word of God. And that means if they are really called to preach the Word of God, no matter what, they're going to continue preaching the Word of God. Why? That is their calling. Kaya nga po si Paul, the moment he started his missionary journey, any moment from there, pwede po siyang patayin. Any moment from there, he could have been killed. He could have been beheaded. He could have been put in prison. And he knows that. It's, uh, he knows that uh, what he's doing is, is a road to his own death. But he kept on preaching the Word of God anyway. He, he's, he, he, he gets beaten almost to death. He recovers, stands up, goes back, preach the Word of God. He, people try to put him to prison, he recovers, goes to another city, start preaching the Word of God. Because why? That is what he's called to do. And the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Hindi po nagbabago ang calling ng Panginoon sa tao na tinawag niya mag-preach. No matter what, kahit po naghihirap na mag-preach, kahit na po ma mahirap ang buhay or, or hindi maganda sitwasyon, sila po ay mag-preach. Why? Because that is the calling of God. Kaya nga, the reason, and sometimes God really gives them a hard life or, or, or a life of suffering. Why? To make the message more effective. Look at the life of the Apostle Paul. If he's the one encouraging people to rejoice while in prison, it makes the message even more effective. Right? If he tells them to give, if he himself do not have a lot to give, but he's still giving, it makes the message more effective. Instead of, uh, uh, if, if, I, if I stand here preaching with 24K gold here and on all of these things, and then I belittle you because you don't have what I have, what kind of message will I be bringing? Right? Because God wants to use the preacher as an example as well. So if I am encouraging you to continue to, 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 uh, to, to stand for the Lord, to continue living for God, and you see my life, uh, that, that I have a difficult life, and I'm continuing to, to, to obey the Word of God, the message will be more effective. That's why uh, God called preachers will keep on preaching no matter what. Kaya nga po nakakita tayo ng mga pastor na kakagaling lang sa sakit ng hina pa. Magpipreach. Why? Kasi binibigyan sila ng kapangyarihan ng Panginoon to preach because God called them to preach. Right? Madam, uh, we, have, we heard testimonies of pastors who when they're preaching, they don't feel the pain. But after preaching, they feel all the pain that they have. Their sickness. Pag nagpipreach sila, malakas sila, tapos nila magpreach, manghihina na sila. And, and some of us may raise, uh, ra uh, raise some eyebrows and say, maybe they're just exaggerating. But I do believe them. Why? Because if they're really God-called preachers, God is going to give them the strength to preach no matter what. And they're going to preach and they're not going to pass up the opportunity to preach. And then when our pastor was in the Philippines for a few weeks, I realized how difficult it is to preach every week. And, to, to, to ex uh, and, and before he, he left, actually, uh, I, I realized how difficult that was. And we preach, uh, for me, I preach once a week, and some, some, uh, before we were only preaching once every uh, six weeks. But it's hard to prepare preaching. And, 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 and uh, uh, ma, uh, uh, it's harder if you have to prepare two or three preachings a week. But a real God-called preacher will, will love the opportunity to preach. Will love the opportunity. Kahit na ano pa pong sitwasyon, nakikinig kayo o hindi, I'm going to preach. Because I, uh, I am called by God to preach. And that is what a God-called God preacher is. It says, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in trembling, but he did not leave them. For, uh, verse number 4, it says here, In my speech, in my preaching, was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and of power letter e god called preachers preach in the power of god and and in this it is related to my first point a while ago but it is uh it is also different 
that uh, if you're really a saved believer and you're listening to preaching, you're going to feel or you're going to realize or you're going to know if a preacher is really preaching in the power of God. You're go going to know that because a God-called preacher will not let his personality take over the preaching. Right? I know that here, here in our church, we have a lot of diff uh, uh, preachers with different personalities. Our pastor is loud and he, 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 he gets in a, jo a, a joke or uh, two here and there, even though it's not funny sometimes, but he, he gets it there and he expects us to laugh. But that is his personality. But you, it will not dominate the preaching. That preacher Gomer uh, is a jokester, uh, but his preaching is not full of jokes. Meron mga joke dyan because that's him. It's fine. But it's not gonna dominate the preaching. Uh, we, we know preacher uh, Rilson is a very illustrative person. He, he does his acrobatics and shows us, you know, uh, para ba talagang uh, nandun yung illustration. Natanggal na nga yung PowerPoint eh. Pero nasa katawan niya pa rin yung PowerPoint. But he will not let his personality dominate the preaching. You know, preacher Mo and preacher Jun, they're very uh, serious preachers but their personality will dominate the preaching. A real preacher will let the Spirit of God control the message. A real preacher will let the Spirit of God do the work. Will let the Spirit of God uh, 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 do the speaking or do the convicting. I'm not saying na hindi na kami nagpe-prepare. Pag tayo namin, oh, Holy Spirit, preach. Ay, magic po yun. Hindi po ganun ang ginagawa namin. But we do prepare. And starting from reading the Word of God, preparing, we rely on the Holy Spirit to teach us. And what the Holy Spirit has taught us, we're teaching you. And the Holy Spirit in you will confirm that what we're teaching is the truth. Kasi yung nagturo sa amin, yun din yung nagtuturo sa inyo. Yung nagturo sa amin, yun din yung nagko-confirm sa inyo na tama yung sinasabi nun. Yun yun, yun yung sinabi ko sa kanila. That is what I want you to understand. That's what I want you to know. And we have to praise God for that. If whenever uh, we are experiencing that at nangyayari po sa atin. That's why as I have said, if a preacher will just impose his personality in the message, you have all the right in the world to stand up and leave. Stand up and leave. And have experienced that so many times. Preachers who will stand and all you hear are their degrees. I studied this, studied that. And while I was studying this, I experienced this. Studying that, I experienced that. And all of these things, blah, blah, blah. All of, and then when the invitation comes, everyone comes forward. I don't know what they're praying about. Lord, sana po magkaradami din akong degrees. Ganun po ba yung pagpapay na? Sana po ma-experience ko din na-experience ni Pastor. You know, that's, that's the reason why uh, uh, whenever we are listening to preaching, and you can know, you can tell, because you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit. Uh, verse number 5 says here, that your faith, and I like this point, that should not, should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Letter F, God called preachers will point us to the right object of faith. You know the difference sa mga members sitting under the preaching of a God called preacher and sitting under the preaching of a very proud preacher. Ito po yung difference. Yung mga member po na mga na, uh, nakikinig ng tamang mensahe, they will say that, I believe this, I stand for this, why? And they'll open the Bible because of this, because of this. This is what the Bible says. Pero po yung mga uh, members na nakikinig sa pastor na hindi naman talaga tinawag ng Panginoon, I believe this, I believe that, because pastor says so. Kasi sabi ni pastor eh. Kasi yun ang na-experience ni pastor. Kasi yun ang nagginagawa namin sa church. Why? They cannot open the Bible to prove their faith. Why? Kasi yung pastor mismo, hindi niya binubuksan yung Bible to show to them the truth. He's telling them his experience and his own formula to success in order for them to know the truth. Kaya paglabas nila, when they're asked of, about the object of their faith or why they believe what they believe, they point to the pastor. Ito sasabi ni pastor, ito kasi hindi natla alam buksan ng Bible. But a real God called preacher will, will produce members who are skillful in using the Word of God. Why? Because he himself is using the Word of God. That's why if, if people will ask you and you are sitting regularly under, uh, under a preacher is called of God, you're going to know how to use your Bible to defend your faith. You're going to know that why if you're listening carefully, if you're taking notes, if you're studying for yourself also, but with the help of a God called preacher, you are going to know how to place your faith in the correct object. I, 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 know, I believe because it's what the Word of God says. And I know it's where the, where the Word of God says because that's what we studied in church and that is what, uh, what, what, what is being lifted up at church. Why? Because kung pong Puro wisdom lang ng tao ang pinipreach dito. Yung pananampalataya mo na sa wisdom lang din ng tao. And that will fail eventually. 
But if, the, if, 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 if what is being preached here is in the power of God, in the wisdom of God, your faith is going to be placed in that correct object and it will never fail. Alam po natin. Why? Alam niyo po ba pagkaalam mo, if you believe that Christ is God, okay, and you know how to prove it in the Bible, no one will ever shake that belief. But if you just say that Christ is God because that's what I hear behind the pulpit, makakausap ka lang ng isang iglesia ni Cristo na magaling, tapos ka. Tapos ka. I have experienced that many times in the Philippines. I believe Christ is God. I don't know how to prove it in the Bible. You knock on doors. Lalo na may iglesia ni Cristo, papapasukin ka niya para debatihin ka lang. You go, you get in. Pakikinig sila. After that, didebatihin ka. Tameme ka ngayon. Wala akong masagot. Ah, na, na, di, di, binigyan pa akong detention nung 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 teacher kasi nakipagdebate daw ako di daw ako nakipagdebate dapat worse talo pa ako hindi hindi ko alam buksan paano ko prove na that, that 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 Christ is God but if i know how to do that no matter who you put in front of me i will use the word of god because that is the right object of my faith that's the correct kaya nga po kung, ta, kung ang preacher po is producing members who are skillful in using the word of god that is one sign of a god called preacher because they're Po, they're pointing the members in the correct faith, in the correct object of their faith. Next here in verses 6 to 8, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world to, that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Yan po yung, yung mensahe ng Panginoon. It's a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Letter G, God called preachers are naturally misunderstood and disliked by this world. God called preachers are naturally misunderstood and disliked by this world. Kaya nga po, you know a fake preacher if everybody loves him. No. Even if unbelievers love him a lot, he's a fake preacher. Because the message we're bringing is naturally offensive to them. But if you tell people that they're on their way to hell, will they love you? If you tell people that they're sinners and they're dirty in, the, in, in, in front of a holy God, will they love you? But if you water down the gospel message, you water down your preaching, and you cater to the, what people like, everybody will love you. Kaya nga po, ang dami pong mega churches. Di po ba? Uh, thousands of people. They even buy tickets to get into the church. Para lang makinig sa mga preachers ito. And everybody loves them. You know they're fake preachers. Why? Because everybody loves them. Why? Kasi wala sila sinasabing offensive. Okay? Imagine, thousands of people loving you at the same time. What kind of watered down and neutral message are you bringing? God loves you. If, you know, you're good. Everybody's good. Yan lang ang pakikinggan mo. Ba, mahalin mo talaga. Makikinig ka. Tugarol ka, lasenggo ka, binubugbong mo asawa mo, pagupo mo sa simbahan, sabihan pang mabait ka. Mahal ka ng Panginoon. Wah, ba, mahalin mo yung preacher na yun. But if a preacher will tell you sin, and will tell you your sin, and will tell you to repent, or if you do not repent, God will not bless you, or maybe you're not saved if you're not repenting, you're not going to love that preacher initially. And God called preachers are going to be misunderstood. Christ himself is, was misunderstood. That's why the, Paul said, if they understood his message, they will not kill him. But they do not understand him. How can we, how can we expect this world to understand us? When he himself is preaching about himself, we're only preaching about him. The world will not understand us. Yung uh, tunay po na preacher will yield only two results. It's either they're going to hate you or they're going to humble themselves under the preaching of the Word of God. And without those two results, you're not a true preacher of the Word of God. It's either they're going to hate you. People who will hate you are people who do not have the Holy Spirit and will not humble themselves in the preaching of the Word of God. Pero po yung mga tunay na ligtas, they're going to humble themselves under the preaching. Why? Kasi po, ang preaching hindi lang po puro encouragement. Now, preaching is not all about encouragement. Preaching is not all about confirming how good you are. Preaching is all about just preaching the Word of God. And if there's something there that offends you, a preacher will not skip over it and will preach about it. Kaya nga po, 
going back to Nehemiah, they're reading verse after verse, explaining it, appropriating it in the Word of God. Kaya ka po later on, we're going to see yung reaction ng mga tao, yung kanilang, yung kanilang uh, response to it. They cry, they mourned. They realized how, uh, how sinful they are. They realized how disobedient they were. Why? Wala pong in-skip yung pagbabasa. Sinabi po lahat, lahat ito, hindi nyo ginawa, kinalimutan nyo. That's why they cried, they mourned. They were supposed to be happy because the wall was finished and they were uh, 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 in a feast during that time. But they were sad. Why? Nakita po nila in the Word of God how sinful they were. And the preaching of the Word of God will make you realize that. They're, they're, going, to, uh, uh, they're going to be misunderstood or they're going to be loved by uh, people who really understand the Word of God. Verse number 9, it says here, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love Him. Kaya po hindi lang naman puro negative ang preaching. Of course, there's encouragement. But a God-called preacher will encourage or will edify using the Word of God. Maganda po for me to say kind words. Okay lang yan. Kaya mo yan. Go lang. Go. Eh, medyo may encourage ka. But pinaka-effective po na encouragement is the Word of God. Paul says, as it is written. Nakasulat, mga kapatid. Okay? Uh, the previous verses here, Paul is telling them the weakness and all this danger and even Christ was crucified. You're going to be persecuted. But the encouragement is here. Brethren, it is written that I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love Him. He's telling them, Mar- Merong kahirapan, marim persecution, but if you really love God, you cannot imagine the things that He has prepared for you. So keep on going. There's also encouragement, but we make sure that encouragement is also uh, around the Word of God. Hindi lang po sarili. Kaya ka po marami tayong maririnig sa mga preachers na hindi biblical. When God closes a door, He opens a door. That sounds good. Maybe sometimes it's right, but it's not biblical. Can never find a verse that says that. May pwedeng nangyayari po sa buhay natin na experience ng iba, but it's not an absolute truth. And 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 that's and and what we have to give people are absolute truth. Uh, laging all things work together for good, kapatid. But to explain the whole thing to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose, and they will be encouraged if they love God. They're called according to His pur- His purpose. You know, kapatid, kaya mo yan, because the Bible says, "I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me." Sabi rin ni Stephen Curry. Pero kita mo, hindi siya naglalaro ngayon. Ay, kasi he cannot do all things literally. Right? Because if you're going to look at the whole chapter, maraming ginagamit ng Panginoon to help you do uh, or be content in all things through Christ. Okay? Explain the context. For I know the thoughts I have towards you. Alam ng Panginoon ang plano niya sa buhay mo. You're not a part of the uh, uh, captivity in Babylon. It's not Verse is not for you. It can never be used for you. And my personal favorite sa mga... Uh, <laughs> Cheerful giving conferences. If you are born poor, it's not your fault. But if you die poor, it's your fault. You read the Bible through and through. Cannot see that. Cannot see that. And if it's God's will for you to be poor your whole life, glorify God in that situation. Sinasabi, you know who said that? Bill Gates. Sinasabi nun, it's not the word of God. You know, people try to encourage us with these kind words and beautiful, uh, all of these things, poems, but it's not the Word of God. And the best kind of encouragement is the Word of God. You know, makabasa ka pa, 2 Samuel 12, 7, and Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. You're the man. You can do it. Di po ba? Sige, basahin niyo yung context niyan. <laughs> Tsaka niyo ma-realize ngayon. You're really the man. Ha? Pagka po meron nagsabi sa inyo niyan na pastor, takbo ka na. Sabi ng Bible, you're the man. Kahit babae ka, you're the man. Apo, that's not the word of God. Okay? Let's read verse 10 to 13. Anong oras na ba? Okay, it's already 10. So we'll, we'll, be quick, we'll be quicker. But God hath revealed unto, unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things we also speak, not in the words of man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. God-called preachers are spirit-led and they have discernment. 
they're spirit led and they have discernment simply because if a preacher is not spirit led he will not understand the word of god why because it is the spirit of god who causes us to understand the word of god it's the holy spirit who causes us to understand the word of god you can read the bible 24 hours a day if you're not saved you will not understand the word of god and the person who understands the word of god is a person who is qualified to preach the word of god and if you understand the word of god as well you're going to confirm if what the person is saying is correct or tama Dipo ba kaya nga po meron din kayong ability binigyan din kayo ng ability ng Panginoon to confirm what we're preaching is correct. Kasi po kung walang binigay sa inyo ang ability ng Panginoon, we can preach whatever we want, hindi niyo malalaman. We can just fool you, we can just deceive you, we can just uh, 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 lead you to directions na uh, talagang uh, 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 maliligaw lang kayo. Which brings us to the next point. Verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, but they are spiritually discerned. So God called preachers are naturally hated by the world. But this point, God called preachers are confirmed by genuine believers. God called preachers are confirmed by genuine believers. Kaya po kung tunay kang mananampalataya, if you're really saved, the Holy Spirit in you will confirm the message that is being preached. And if the message that's being preached is not correct, you, it will not sit right with you. Okay? I'm not saying now you, you sit there judging the preacher, but, but in a way you have to be judging the message. But what, what, what I'm saying is you, as you listen, as the preacher lets the Holy Spirit uh, control him while he's preaching, you must also rely on the Holy Spirit as you listen to confirm the message that is being preached. Okay? You're not judging the message by your own intellect then, by your own wisdom then, by your own might. You're also judging the message by the Holy Spirit, being Spirit-led listeners as well. And the Holy Spirit will, will confirm to you if the message that you're preaching is, uh, that, that is being preached is right. When you say, preacher, sounds like para napaka-judgmental naman namin members kung gano'n ang ginagawa namin. Diba? Para bang, uh, uh, para bang titignan namin kung tama o mali? Note. Tama, okay, sige, tama yan, amen. Pag mali, note. No, uh, you are, pag, we're not doing that in that kind of spirit. Not just judge for the sake of judging. But we're judging for the sake of knowing what is being preached is right and for the sake of helping the preacher if merong mali. Right? And um, here, in ver uh, here in verse 14, it says here, but the, uh, what do they call this? Verse 15, can you put verse 15? Mali yung na-note ko dito. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Okay, first the preacher has to judge what he's preaching. Okay, we study the word of God, we read the word of God, we, when we don't understand, we, we get resources to help us understand. But as we read those resources, we're judging that as well. We're judging, is this correct? Is this just the opinion of the writer? Or is this really what God is saying? So in that way, we're judging the way, what we're going to preach. And when you listen, in the same way, you're going to judge what we are preaching. Okay, hindi po yung in a negative way. You have to understand that. You're judging that for the glory of God. Para malaman mo, makuha mo kung ano yung tama. And it's not wrong to judge the message. It's not wrong. Hindi po mali na husgahan nyo ang preach dito. We're actually encouraging you to do that. And, and, and sometimes, and a lot of times, meron din kami mga nasasabi na mali, hindi namin masyado na pag-aralan. And we expect you to know about that, to catch that, and to let us know about it. Hindi kami magagalit. Hindi namin kayo susuntukin. Hindi namin sasabihin, ang yabang nyo na makala nyo, alam nyo na lahat, kayo kayo mag-preach dito. Wala pong nagaganon dito. We appreciate that. And, 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 and I don't know, nobody corrected me in the hundreds of years of... Uh, uh, Captivity was only 70 years. Maybe you didn't catch it as well because hindi ko rin napansin nung sinabi ko yun. But I did say that. But then I'm, I want to be, uh, I'm willing to be corrected as well. And I'm sure all the preachers here are willing to be corrected. And if you are really spirit-led listeners, you're going to know if what we're preaching is wrong. And by love, through the love of the Word of God and love for truth, you're going to let us know about it. And what is my challenge to you this morning? as we only read two verses here in Nehemiah, my challenge to you is, first, it's your responsibility to make sure, to find out and make sure that you are sitting under the preaching of God called preachers. That you are in a church who's preaching the truth of the Word of God and is preaching uh, only the truth of the Word of God. It's your responsibility. It's not the preacher's responsibility. Kaya nga po, pag umalis tayo sa lugar na to, the first priority dapat is to find a church that is preaching the truth. 
And if there are no churches that are preaching the truth, wag kang pupunta sa lugar na yon. Because it's your responsibility to make sure that you are sitting under the correct preaching. Kasi without that, you're never going to grow. Never going to grow in the Word of God. And it's your fault pag hindi ka lumago. Okay? And my second challenge is if you have found that kind of church, appreciate that church. Love that church. I'm not saying love the people who are preaching. Love the Word of God more. Love the truth more. Love the church more. Love the ministry more. Why? Because God has blessed you enough or, or more than enough para ilagay ka sa simbahan na nagpipreach ng katotohanan ng Word of God. And not everyone has that kind of opportunity. Kaya nga po minsan, tatama rin pa tayong umaten. Wag po. Tatama rin pa tayong makinig ng preaching. Wag po. Kung, 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 kung hindi to tama ang pinipreach, sige, tama rin ka. Wag kang makinig. Fine. No problem. Pero kung tama ang pinipreach, you have no right to be lazy to listen. You have no right to reject the preaching of the Word of God. You have no right to skip attending church. Why? Because that's the time when we listen to a God-called preacher. And if we have found that, praise the Lord. And we praise the Lord if you have found that in this church as well. And we pray that we're going to be able to continue to preach that kind of message and be a preacher that, the, a preacher that God has called, spirit-led preachers who will preach the truth and nothing but the truth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you, dear Lord, for the Sunday school. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you help us. As